Very respected sir, invited guest. Today, uh, Department of English, M.K. Bhavanagi University has organized a talk session of Devang Nanavati sir on eco-political thinking, Chitanshu Yazas Chandras, J once again. Okay, we all know that how many kind of uh, ecological and uh, environmental uh, crisis we all have faced. Okay, we cut down the trees for our personal uses and uh, so many natural crises we all have faced in this era. And uh, we have organized this session on virtually because of COVID-19 pandemic. It is the you know, best example of a crisis and uh, this so must be very interesting because uh, uh, we all uh, are facing these of crises. So uh, looking this, uh, uh, I was thinking uh, thinking that uh, really interesting uh, it is a topic because eco-critical thinking and uh, today we all are regularly listen uh, to Devang sir because uh, of this uh, time. So I would like to request our professor Dilip Barrett sir to give an introduction of our guest and uh, 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 give us the information about him. Over to Dilip sir. sir. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Devang Nanavati uh, uh, he is uh, our, uh, the student of our department. Uh, in fact, we were classmates uh, in MA. Uh, we were doing uh, MA together. We passed in 1996. And uh, uh, he was the gold medal student of our batch. He was uh, uh, very bright, uh, very, uh, very hardworking. Uh, and uh, as a student, I remember we used to take lots of help from his notes. Uh, and many many other things also so uh, as a student uh, uh, i still remember uh, uh, he was uh, like uh, uh, very sincere and inspiring to many other students a good leader he was there as a gs uh, of our class also uh, and now as a teacher also he's doing a very significant work he's staying in baroda and working with a nearby college there uh, he is on the verge of completing his phd he has already submitted his phd uh, uh, a thesis uh, is working uh, uh, with uh, uh, MS University of Baroda. Uh, there he is. He is on the verge of completing his PhD. He has submitted his PhD thesis, and his topic is on eco criticism and uh, is looking at you know, the works of Drew Butt and one uh, Udia writer. These two writers, and uh, the theme is eco critical criticism. So I thought that uh, let us invite him and let us. Uh, uh, learn something from him that what he has researched so far as eco criticism is concerned and uh, he has made use of some very interesting gujarati poems in his research work he himself has translated also and he is a very good translator also of poetry and short stories so in a very significant way meaningful way he is uh, 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 doing wonderful translations of this literary works also so he himself translated and he worked on that so he thought that there is Sitamshu Yashas Chandra's uh, one interesting poem which uh, he can discuss uh, and some of the theories of eco-criticism can be very useful uh, uh, in this. Uh, our students, uh, semester three students are uh, uh, dealing with post-colonial studies and in post-colonial studies we have seen that nowadays post-colonial studies are concentrating around environmental studies uh, after globalization. Uh, their concentration in this post-colonial world uh, is towards uh, uh, environmental studies. So uh, this topic can be of very direct ref uh, use, uh, reference and useful to semester three students uh, when they study their post-colonial uh, 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 literatures. Uh, for semester one students, uh, this topic can be quite new, but they also will get a concept of what is eco-criticism and how it can be utilized in various works of arts. Uh, and uh, apart from that, as we have that system of Sunday reading, Sunday reading for additional work we give to our students. Uh, which is not directly a part of syllabus. So sem for semester one student, this will be Sunday reading. This will be their third Sunday reading. You you have you have worked on the plague novel by Albert Camus, then you have worked on uh, Haruki Murakami's short story, The Elephant Vanishes, uh, and now this will be the third one in, in the series of Sunday readings that we'll be doing. And this Sunday will be on this Diwali days. So on Diwali days, you may be writing your blogs on what you are going to listen today eh, from uh, Devang Nanavati. So uh, uh, it will be interesting for both the groups of students in different way, how they, they capture the ideas which are shared by uh, Devang Nanavati on this uh, topic. 
so uh, 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 devang we uh, request you all uh, to uh, carry on with your talk you can first give some brief introductory things and then you can share your uh, presentation with everybody okay. over to you sir thank you uh, thank you professor uh, dilip barad as i said we were classmates and we used to sit on the same bench and uh, i'm really uh, he has uh, you see uh, pushed me back into the old memories and because you are dealing with uh, romanticism it has direct connections with emotions so he he has revived wonderful memories wonderful moments that we have spent together dr dilip barad is nowadays for me a very inspiring figure and as i said and you rightly said that he was a good student so was refers to <laughs> uh, because my guide also perhaps says so i am not as good as i was but i am still a student like all of you part 1 part 2 and being a student you see there is no age bar and i am new to this field after working for more than 4 years on eco criticism i could say that even after working on this field for more than a decade one would be able to say only one statement and that is i have learned only 0.0001% of out of the sea of eco critical voices so uh whatever i have picked up from whatever research i have done i am here to share with you on the other day i was talking to professor barad that it would be a mutually beneficial experience for me to have interactions with the students of our own department because nowadays you have an opportunity to get exposed to so many different varieties of disciplines knowledge everything is in your palm and i'm no i'm absolutely novice in the field of digital teaching learning process for example i have taken a great help from my daughter dirga today in preparing these slides and connecting with you so it will be an interesting uh, exercise for me also and i guess your inputs at the end of uh, this presentation will be very helpful for me also in exploring this topic further because as you know nidhi rightly said that environmental conservation environmental problematic has captured global attention since last 5 decades and especially after post industrial era we have entered the way in which human impact has disturbed ecological balance in various ways this needs to be thought over that needs to be you see addressed and nowadays our life has become so you so uh, uh, caught up in tight schedules that many a times we miss the important points many a times we forget that we are also like a squirrel or like a dog or like a cow we are also part of nature but generally when we talk about nature we feel that uh, we don't belong to nature because we are representatives of culture so this nature culture divide has to be bridged somewhere and this will start from all of us from the students first because after all as the eco scientists and the anthropologists and the historians eco historians like ramchandra guha madhav gadgil all of them they predict a very bleak future for the mankind if we continue to exacerbate the way in which we are dealing with environment so it is the youth who is most concerned with environmental problematic and the voice of the youth can be found in greta thumbel's speech that you must have come across on youtube the wonderful impassioned speech to preserve environment friends at the very outset let us admit that without being a bit exploitative we cannot survive 
we have to take everything from nature right from our food from the breath that we take in from the water that we take in for everything we have to beg from the nature which is a common collective treasure that nature has gifted us so friends we have to be a bit exploitative no doubt but we have to circumscribe the limits of our exploitation it would be logical not to disturb the nature so much that they would be you see fall down break down at once and our existence would come into danger all the ecologists have been pointing towards the need to preserve environment because of this reason because environmental problematic has engendered a very serious existential implications and therefore we are here on this digital platform today perhaps so friends i would like to share the uh, image of uh, the first image of my presentation and i want you to have a look at it i full please spend 2 3 seconds to the first image of my presentation yes you would be able to see how magnanimous the presence of a tree looks even on a digital screen you see and we are going to talk about the existence of the tree and the possibilities of non existence of trees and we are going to explore with help of sitansu yesesandra's poem and the title of the poem is as you know tree once again i'll try to have a brief look at how we can eco critically situate this poem in the world of our gujarati literature as well as in our academia you see as soon as you look at the tree our memories religious memories collective memories primordial past religious spiritual memories being indians we recall lord krishna's love for the kadamba tree we also recall that buddha attained his enlightenment under a tree if you put this thing in literary context you also perhaps remember mahasvita devi's short story arjun you see in arjun if you have come across this story you know that in arjun tree there is a tribal group of santhals and they are living peacefully in the jungles but one day the local politician come trader brings in a proposal to remove the arjun tree from the from the place where it stands for years together because there is a road construction project and to continue with this project the tree has to be removed but the tribals fight collectively and they were able to protect the tree as we know this story reflects that we have come from aranyak sanskriti we belong to a forest culture and all our epics be it ramayana or mahabharata or even gita references to the importance of trees and all the other interconnected lives with them are established and you see our primordial relations with forests are obvious but we forget many a times we tend to commodify trees and its natural beauty here we will try to juxtapose some of the existence uh, existential realities some of uh, contemporary uh, realities with our uh, religious beliefs about trees and nature here we'll try to see how the select poem will help us explore the contemporary environmental problematic as you know friends environmental problematic has assumed very very significant dimensions and 
within that environmental discourse the question of deforestation is really really very intriguing and and it is a burning question because now unlike the tribal people we do have you see our scientific understanding about the importance of preserving the trees and yet if you look at the figures on the internet in the annual reports published by authentic resources about deforestation you will know how pathetically how poignantly you can say in literary terms the deforestation is going on and how drastic effect it's going to have on our existence in the beginning the uh, I, I forget the name uh, nidhi yes nidhi said that in because of pandemic we are sharing this digital screen but nidhi as you know nowadays you must have come uh, you must be coming across some news items also that in enhancing the effect of the pandemic and in disturbing the immunity of humans as well as non humans deforestation is a major factor so deforestation has assumed reforestation afforestation to cut the impact of the deforestation everything all these issues have assumed very important dimensions today in all kinds of discourse let me say because it has direct connections with what you call climate change and sustainable development we know that tree covers green covers act as carbon sinks natural carbon sinks they take take in our uh, carbon dioxide but because of you see the increased human activities we have been adding carbon dioxide into the atmosphere especially in the post industrial era in the anthropocene we have been adding so much uh, carbon dioxide that the carbon footprints removing the carbon footprints or minimizing the same has become a very you see uh, uh, crucial problem for entire humanity so in this situation if we go on removing trees haphazardly without thinking that whether we remove the tree because of our need or because of our greed that is a question that we must ask ourselves but as i said our life systems have become so you see we are uh, jellified in especially in the city areas we feel that we are not connected with nature often it happens and therefore i remember one poem by william harris that i would like to quote here he says let me uh, blend poetic lines by william harris as well as robert frost robert uh, this william harris says we have no time to stand and stare no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows no time to see when woods we pass and if you recall robert frost lines this is what we do because we have no we have miles to go before we sleep our horse of dry reason will always give his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake are you committing some mistake by looking at the beauty of nature by thinking about preserving nature so such voices come across when you jump into eco critical discourse so the horse will say even if we stand and stare at the beauty of the grove to listen to the songs of the birds the horse will ask us are we committing some mistakes so again going back to william harris lines we have no time to see when wood we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass a poor life this if full of care we have no time to stand and stare you see friends we don't look at certain objects certain things we begin to lose its importance out of sight goes out of mind of course and out of sight situation comes when we stop thinking about it or rather our thoughts are diverted into some other directions 
So there is a disconnect today between man and the nature, between us and what we call others. This apartheid, if, we, if you allow me to use this post-colonial term, this distancing actually denaturalizes us. It pushes away from the wonderful virtues of nature, which gives openness, which gives a sense of sharing, which teaches us how to cooperate with one another. Because you see, each tree is connected with the other tree. Everything is connected in this ecological systems. And none other than our Indian scientist, Jagdish Chandra Bose, had proved that in 1905 in England. He had invented, if you recall, cascograph, with the help of which he used to measure emotions of a tree. If you raise an X and hack a tree, what kind of emotions a tree goes through. This is what he had recorded. And what kind of wonderful emotions a tree might have. If you lovingly touch it, if you preserve it, if you water it. So trees may not have the language that we speak. Spe trees may not have the words that I am using with you right now. But they do have certain language, which we may not be able to understand. But every tree has a message system. The way in which we do our WhatsApp, trees also send messages of signals of danger or signals of, you see, uh, good feelings among one another. So it is a live entity, just like humans. So the present poem, Trees, once again, raises all these questions. Friends, when I met Professor Sitansu Yashasindra to talk about this poem, and when I asked him uh, what kind of uh, thoughts he, he was going through when he wrote this poem, he frankly said that, Devang, you are trying to ask, uh, ask me the questions regarding environmental problematic. But he wrote this poem in, back in 1970s. At that time, there was no thought of talking about environment. Uh, frankly admitted it. The same thought is shared by Amitav Ghosh in his book, Great Derangement. He says that authors, writers have not given adequate thought to environmental conservation. Although in the post-industrial era, environment was pathetically being disturbed and everybody was a witness to it in fact england colonized so many parts of the world and england itself was disturbing its own natural ecology as well as ecology of the colonies at that time you see romanticism was a reaction to neoclassicism do you think at present also we are leading lives as the people used to live in neoclassic era? Do you think so? You know, city life, malls, city characters, status symbols, everything. There is no harm in having our own style of living, but this is high time that we thought about how our modes of life how our definitions of life, how our definitions of progress, how our narratives of development impact nature, and how it's going to boomerang in the very near future. So it's time to think of it. And incidentally, from today, your vacation has started. So there is a time to relax, to have some respite, to have some introspection. So I think. This poem is going to do all these functions once we have a look at it. So friends, I would like to uh, start my presentation by suggesting how ecocriticism helps us. You see, ecocriticism appreciates a shift from Greek centrism 
to green centrism. Friends, you can see the image, the GIF that I've used it here. How with the help of machine, we have been able to obliterate natural entities within no time. Previously also, we used to remove trees to make our accommodation. But now, that speed is horrific. So instead of that, we need to embrace our green heritage. The way in which I've taken this image from the tree hugging revolution that took place in 1970s. So uh, in, in Garwad district of Himalayas, and one of the youngest participants of this movement was Vandana Shiva. As you know, she is a very important eco-feminist and she has uh, uh, a reputation not within India but out of India on international environmental platforms. She has been uh, promoting eco-feminism. So friends, uh, when I was uh, just uh, looking at the poem, I came across two other poetic lines which I would like to share with you. One was from Gunjan Gandhi, which I have translated, and the other was from Jessica D. Conning. This is her poem after Babel. And both have been shared on tauko.com that is managed by Mr. Vivek Taylor. You'll find a lot many poems and translations also if you are interested on this website that is tauko.com. Gunjan Gandhi says, when these trees will demand a tax, trees cannot speak. Trees cannot raise their, their voice against our injustices. But suppose, imagine, trees can also speak like us when they will demand a tax in the shade to relax. The trees will teach. Let me add my own word, a crude capitalism to the world. And in After Babel, Jessica D. Conning says, she talks about the language of nature. When we come into this world, the language that now we are using, be it our mother tongue or a foreign tongue, it has been instilled into our mind through process of education. But first of all, what we learn is what we receive automatically is the language of nature. So Jessica says there is a common language. I cannot master it. Still, I have not been able to understand the, the language of nature because I have divorced from nature, perhaps. There is a common language. I cannot master it, though it was my first. English came second. I don't know the nouns of this language and its syntax, but rivers speak it. As do bones and the bottles left for recycling. The geese in the lake, peach trees, it is there in the static of stars. Stars, rather. It is not stars, it is stars. But I remain dumb if I could speak this language. I had its vocabulary. If I knew its tune, I could tell you and you would understand. Friends, I have also been trying to speak this tongue through or rather with the help of Sitanshu Yasasthanda's poem to know its vocabulary for if I can. Let us try to understand the tune of the poem so that we can understand our role, present role and future role in minimizing environmental destruction. Friends, environmental problematic, as I said, has, of course, global dimensions. But local wisdom that is preserved in local languages is very important, which has often been ignored because we have been receiving and emulating or rather imitating Western models of thought, even in critical arena. So global economy and global ecology. There is a tug of war between these two subjects. And in this war, we have to see that ecology wins. And for that, environmental consciousness has to be raised 
at individual level as well as collective level, at social levels as well as political levels. Because global economic forces, you must have seen, as Dr. Dilip Barad had mentioned, the problem of uh, the global economic forces and the local trading as well as the local natural and social ecologies has become really a great issue and it has to be addressed. Global economic forces are trying to subsume the local forces and not only local forces but local languages. English is a global language, but nowadays we start our learning in English medium schools and there is no harm in studying in English medium schools, but we have to see that our own language doesn't get disappeared because along with the disappearance of local languages, our cultures and the eco sensitivity that is embedded in our cultures is also lost. So we need to appreciate ecological wisdom preserved in indigenous languages. And then we have to think about what should be the role of literature, literary texts, literary poems. How the present poem will try to see refers to the question of deforestation. Because as I said, forests are functioning as green lungs of the entire earth. And the corona pandemic has compelled us to focus on preserving the health of our lungs and in sustainable growth also preserving trees are very important because we depend upon the trees directly on oxygen no doubt but the poor forest dwellers their subsistence their food fodder and fuel everything comes from trees and jungles so when we read this poem we have also to think about the questions of expulsions of huge masses of tribal people from the forest areas because new projects are being introduced into their areas and we have to see how we can enhance increase green covers of india also because you know to have a good and healthy ecosystem we should have at least 33 percent of green covers and you see india has been trying hard to increase its green covers and recently the government report says that we have been able to increase the green covers uh, up to 0.5 percentage no doubt but there are some environmentalists in india who have problems with the mapping of the green covers with the measurement strategies of the green covers but anyways we have to take care of our green covers and we have to reach the challenge of increasing our green covers from present 25 percent to 33 before 2030 because in paris agreement we have promised this on the international platform as you know all international platforms the un have been insisting upon preserving the forests so we'll see how our poem deals with it but before we deal with uh, this poem let's understand because i I'll, when i'll go to the slide on eco critical tools i'll mention this that eco critics juxtapose the figures and facts that he finds in newspaper reports in scientific reports in various kinds of concrete reports and they will try to juxtapose them with the fictional realities so that we can know where we have to go ahead and how we can go ahead. If we look at the situation of deforestation globally, then we must note that area of primary forest worldwide, as I have written here, has been decreased over 18 million hectares since 1990s, post-global world. Indian cover right now is around 24.56, which has to be increased up to 10% within the coming decade. And then in Gujarat, if you talk of Gujarat, because we will deal with a Gujarati poem, if you talk of Gujarat, the 2015 report says that between 
20 uh, i mean 2000 and 2015 we have lost 15.08 lakh trees because of the government development projects and road construction activities and these are the figures given by government as himanshu kaushik reports in hindustan times now you see the situation of trees here it is pictorial representation you can see the title of the picture is last bill and it, it is uh, given by maria popova the situation of trees is like this its voice has completely been silenced and there's nobody to hear voices of the trees so it is just raising its hands in prayer towards the heavens that please save me now you see nobody will come to save us we have to save ourselves so we have to do something about deforestation friends as you know sitanshu yashchandra is we should proud to say that he is a padma sri he is a professor he was an ex vc of saurashtra university he is a poet he is a critic dramatist he has written screenplays and is the president of Gujarati Sahitya Parishad, as well as is right now editor of Gujarati Sabha Trimasik, which has been published by the prestigious Farmers Gujarati Sabha. You can see his photograph here. And the poem that I'm going to use today for eco-critical interpretation has been taken from his very well acclaimed collection of poetry that is Odysseus Nu Halesu. And if you allow me to read a few lines from his first page, Fari Pacho Vruksh, which I have translated, I'll read, I would like to read a few lines from his Gujarati poem. You see, between the title and the actual start of the poem, there's a gap, as if it asks us to think a little before we deal with even the poets on nature, the poems on nature. Fari Pachu Vruksh. Juna Samayna e Tapkiriya Thadne. Haveto Thik Thik Varso Thi. Vahari Choli Ghatku Tapi. Garma Vaparvanu Furniture Banavi Lidu Hato. Utaole Jamba Beswanu Table Ane Khurshiyo. Hamana Sabandione and Uprione Kagala Lakwanu Maj Roj Sao Taja Samacharo Samarata Radio Mukwanu Stan Kai Ketlai Kamni Vastu Banavilidia Juna Samina E Tapkiria Third Monday Kai Koi Janjavat Noto Thero Nakoi Vij Karaka Yade Nati Autu केवु हतु ए वृक्ष वृक्ष रमुज थाय ने मानिए ना शकाय आजे तो मारा थी कि आज टेबल खुर्शियो मेज स्टैंड बुकशेल अबेरायो आ बदु वळिया जूना समय नो वृक्ष हतु मारा थी तो आजे कदाच मानिए ना शकाय ने हसवु आवे फ्रेंड्स सितांशु Yes, Chandra has his peculiar style of satirizing human sentiments, human ways of thinking. In a subtle way, when he says, Hasu Ave, I laugh. I, I can hear some black humor. You see, how he does so, that we'll see when we read the poem. So, as I said, eco criticism has its specific goals and strategies. Nidhi, in the very at the very start of uh, this presentation, said that eco criticism is, uh, you see, replete with diverse kinds of voices, and therefore there are numerous trends, and all these trends come under, are grouped under an umbrella term called eco criticism. Although ecocritism has, has formally started in 1990s in America, and now it has assumed its significance. It has made a significant place in 
environmental discourses within and outside of academy as well. But there are so many different kinds of strategies and strengths that it's difficult to pinpoint in this presentation the different strengths and their own strategies to deal with environmental problematic. So here I would like to generalize. I would like to just mention the goals and strategies of ecocriticism per se. I'll not differentiate between between among the different strengths of ecocritical uh, thinking. So what are the goals, general goals and strengths of ecocriticism? First of all, it 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 wants to ecosensitize the human psyche so that the speed of our march towards eco societal future can be deaccelerated. And for that, it integrates various insights it gets from different disciplines of knowledge. It has become a multidisciplinary platform because it absorbs thoughts and ideas and concepts and theories from various domains of knowledge eco ecological science literary criticism animal studies botany environmental law anthropology history economics philosophy cultural studies and even cartoon films and cyborgs and if you talk about posthumanism it also refers to psychology of humans the changes that have come into uh, human psychology and the dealings with nature, everything uh, it embraces. And as I said, the tools of ecocriticism is the statistical data, which an ecocritical, which an ecocritic might draw from scientific experiments, newspaper reports, and various kinds of authentic resources. And it examines the text in light of the narrative techniques, how the author has used narrations how he has represented nature how he deals with the problems of nature and the problems of human beings and the problems of the relationships that we find today between nature and culture so how different modes of representing natures are being studied by ecocritics ecocritics also evaluate decide the value of a literary text in light of how great potential a text has about enhancing our environmental sensitivity, our environmental awareness. So friends will see how the select poem does so. But before we turn to the criticism of the poem, appreciation of the poem, let's have a common definition of ecocritism first. There are, you will find various definitions because every critic wants to look at environmental problematic from his own angle there are various definitions plethora of definitions but every definition has you see a moral dimension to it every definition would say generally like this that it studies artistic de depictions of nature culture relationships the fictional depictions in their ecological context and ecocriticism, as you know, is always is also being known by different other nomenclatures, such as environmental criticism. In England, it is mostly referred to as green studies. In America, it is ecocriticism. And environmental criticism is a general term that is used everywhere. And it is also known as ecopoetics. You will see that roots of nature, this nature oriented approach will go back to English Romanticism or if, if you study German Romanticism, if you are some of you are studying German Romanticism, Romanticism itself and American Transcendentalism also. Uh, you see uh, the uh, I remember one book by this uh, uh, Emerson. Uh, which was a uh, which was a uh, rich document so far as nature is concerned. This Walden, so American transcendentalists also had appealed the American society at that time that they should try to not to harm 
nature as far as possible. The other books, there are various books, but these are the landmark books that I have tried to accommodate in these uh, two captions. The first is Silent Spring. You'll come across this word, Silent Spring, many times, and it was written by Russell Carson. Russell Carson had given an apocalyptic picture of what would happen if we, if we don't take care of environment. In Silent Spring, Russell Carson depicts killings of a lot many birds in her backyard who were killed because of the use of pesticides and how the spring would become silent first for the birds and then for the humans also that we have to think and then another important ecologically conscious book is the country and the spirits he is an important English Marxist critic, he looks at the problem from economic dimension. And then the comedy of survival by Joseph Meeker is also an important book. And then very important book is by William Ricard, Literature and Ecology, an experiment in eco-criticism. Friends, in this, in one of his, these essays, William Ricard has said, he has appealed for the first time formally to the scholars to apply ecological norms and tenets in understanding literature. And then in 1989, a conference was held and it was organized by Cheryl Glotfelty and Harold Fromm. And there are various other critics there, Slovik and others are there. Another important critic is Greg Gerard, whose book, Eco Criticism, is a very important document in eco criticism today. In this conference, Cheryl Grotfeldt and Harold Fromm appealed to the scholars to focus on nature writing. They wanted to bring back the lost glory of nature writing. And so, as a result, in 1996, they brought out a book called Eco Criticism Reader Landmarks in Literary Ecology. You, friends, you will find this book on the internet and you can officially download it. It's a, it is Gita for eco I would say, because it gives you overall idea of eco-criticism. In 1998, Lawrence Lewell, another very important eco-critic, brought toxic discourse. And in 2000 came Jonathan Bates. Again, he's an English eco-critic, the song of the earth. Today, ISLE, that is Interdisciplinary Studies in Literature and Environment, is a general, it's very active. It uh, uh, publishes scholarly articles on eco -criticism. If you are interested, you can be a member of ISLE and they will send you notifications about conferences. They'll send you emails. So friends, the salient features of eco-critical strengths, there are many strengths. Feminists, when look at eco-critical problems, they will form their own theory, that is eco-feminism. Marxists, when they will look at ecological problem, they will have their own theory. That is eco Marxism. Deep ecologists who want us to have a look at environment from spiritual aspects, it is called deep ecology. And like that, there are other strengths like eco spiritualism and uh, eco animal studies, and uh, various other strengths are there. But all these strengths have some common features. And these common features are earth centrism. All eco-critical strengths point towards one thing, that how a book concentrates on the issue of earth centrism. Friends, earth has never been a focus of literature till, according to Amitav Ghosh, till 1970s. Of course, You'll find descriptions of nature, descriptions of earth in various writings, but conscious writing about preservation had not started till 1970s, according to Amit Ankhush. So earth centrism is the basic tenet of eco-criticism. It brings this the forgotten voice of the earth into the center. And in the introduction of uh, this uh, eco-critical reader, Cheryl Glotfelty says that eco-criticism has one 
food in literature and the other food in on land so they synthesize the problems of land the human sponsored problems of land and the problems of ecology and the problems in literature friends ecocrism interconnects the issues the existent issues with ecological problems they try to evaluate how literature an author consciously or unconsciously looks at nature and how it has been able to you see kindle a spark among its readership ecocrism talks about environmental justice for various sections of the society and as dr dilip barer has said of course post colonial discourse has accommodated has embraced ecocriticism within its discourse because it is post colonial in every way i would say post colonial because when we read the poem that we are going to read today when we read such poems it revives memories of our colonial past also how colonial masters used to exploit nature and the human resources of their colonies and how a cumulative effect the entire world is facing today is a problem that has to be addressed by the developed economies today so it is post colonial it is post colonial because it gives voice to the previously silenced voices first of all the voice of the earth itself and then you see victimization because of the environmental disturbance happens mostly with economically and socially marginalized people so that voices also have to be heard and ecocritism does that but basically all trends refer to anti anthropocentric tendencies you see humans were and are still at the center of everything we do but we need also to accommodate non human entities so that is why they adopt anti anthropocentric tendencies and strategies to evaluate a work of art and they interrogate as i said why is it post colonial it interrogates the narratives of human progress by by holding mirror up to not only the green nature but the human nature what it has done with the nature itself how we have impacted flora and fauna and the natural habitats of the birds and insects and uh, various animals and everything you know entire non human world that exists that throbs because they are dependent directly on natural resources but we are destroying their habitats day and night so that has to be our our practices have to be used to scrutinized and the difference between in gandhian terms if if you, if you are we would like to say need and greed has to be you see understood whether we are destructing the forest because of our need or because of our greed we can if we, we can just think over this i think a lot the, the speed of destruction would be really minimal for example nowadays if we shift our homes to newer homes there is a social status and style that in the new home everything has to be new so the old furniture has to be removed although it can still function very well for next 20 years but it has to be removed and so we also contribute towards deforestation in one or the other way if individually if we start thinking about these problems and our implications into these problems i think uh, the uh, the labor of the ecocritics would find some good results as i said it is multidisciplinary in nature and it is holistic because it is multidisciplinary multidisciplinary it is holistic it it you you see ecocritism cannot be considered a monolithic one dimensional a uh, critical domain it is a holistic uh, 
very flexible all embracing uh, uh, kind of uh, eco critical platform so how we'll see how the poem reconnects us with the material exploitation of india in the colonial past how post independent plans and our post independent failures also it will refer to it will i feel, I, i mean it will impel us to refer to the failures of the our dealing with the environmental issues and the global environmental scenario uh, will see in post industrial and post global world and how we have also created pressures within india and out of india so here is the poem before you friends i i would like to just read the poem for you first and then we'll go uh, then we'll try to appreciate each line or uh, the stylistics uh, uh, strategies of the poet uh, uh, so first of all let me read the poem sitansu yasitendras three once again that olden ochre brown tree trunk already soaked rest and tip tip for so many years from now it was used to make the furniture for home the dining table for his tea bills and the chairs and the table to write letters to the new acquaintances and to the seniors a radio stand from which absolutely fresh news keep flowing daily so many things of such great importance were made out of the olden ochre brown, brown tree nowhere a stone struck nor did any thunderbolts even not a tint of memory could trace how that tree looked like tree funny it sounds and i cannot even believe it today that this table chairs writing table stand bookshelf and all these things were indeed an olden tree once upon a time today it's incredible and perhaps i would laugh in fact sometimes after returning home exhausted having had a full meal while reading the latest issue of janakalyan a gift that comes from a well wisher in fact sometimes if one fantasizes that from the arm of the chair lying near this door blossoms a violet color flower that there nodes a sour tasting sweet from fruit from the drawer of the table covered with papers full of oration notes that a red bird suddenly takes a flight from the shelf where the files of janakalyan and akhandanan are stacked that the intoxicating fragrance of a spring arriving unannounced oozes into the drawer where the daily wares are kept unfolded are kept folded sorry and then again one laughs a little then again one laughs a little and feels amused and remembers that the olden ochre brown tree trunk already sold rest tip tap so many years from now has been used to make the furniture for home you see friends once you read the poem it certainly stimulates your thoughts about how we behave or how we think about nature the title itself you see is so thought provoking tree once again first of all the tree is the hero of this poem tree is the protagonist of the poem so it has of course brought tree into the center of the imaginative creation tree once again you see once a tree is removed can it grow again in the same way in this can it uh, assume the same shape again can the reforestation and deforestation of course this is the on, this is the only way to deal with the environmental problem with now but the laws of the environment says that you can remove a tree then you can start reforestation and deforestation but friends 
to become a mature to come into a mature stage a tree takes more than five ten years and we remove them now so what about the gap of those 10 years this is what we have to think so three once again once again also tells us that once a tree is removed life cycles of so many birds insects animals and even people who, who depend upon tree are also removed so can the same rhythm can be brought back once again you see the first line you look at the first line that olden ochre brown tree olden you have a sense of respect reverence for an oaken brown tree you feel like embracing it the way in which this tree hugging movement participants used to do but it has already been sown, rest and tipped for so many years from now. It was used to make the furniture for home. It's okay if you make furniture. But you look at the objects. The dining table for what? For hasty meals. You are not able to even take the meals at, you know, you, you are not able to enjoy your meals. It, these are hasty meals. You just gulp down what is served and you go on your work do you remove the trees just for these hasty meals and the chairs and the table to write letters to the new acquaintances and to the seniors thankfully dr Bard would be very happy to uh, acknowledge that nowadays we don't write letters and we do in in that way we stopped uh, we, we we contribute in stopping uh, cutting of the trees nowadays we send emails a single email also generates carbon footprint of around 20 milligram so i was trying to uh, find the figures about if suppose i i say one paper and suppose i send the same message through email how would i save environment this is what i could not find if some of you have that knowledge please share with me when we have question answer sessions so and to the seniors these letters are addressed to the seniors these are not personal emotional letters these are supposed to be you see official letters uh, which are usually uh, which are which usually lack want and then we have made a radio stand from which absolutely fresh news keep flowing daily absolutely fresh news news is always about the past in fact the entire poem is also a news about how we have behaved with our trees but fresh news keep flowing daily it also stirs our you see memories about the way in which digital media is behaving have you ever seen clips of deforestation being done right now within india and out of india how amazon forests are being cut mercilessly last month even uh, uh, i i just came across a news today morning that even after knowing so much about the importance of protecting amazon forests which are the greatest green treasure deforestation has not stopped so what kind of news should we focus? This is what we have to learn from this line. So many things of great importance. You see, are these things of great importance? What kind of news do we receive? And for that, we uh, make a radio stand out of a tree, which is, of course, of great importance. They were made out of that olden ochre brown tree trunk. And yet, nowhere a storm struck. Media took no notice of it. Nowhere a storm struck. Nor did any thunderbolts felling of a tree for without consent of the people who live around them felling of a tree is destruction of the commons what you call on which poor community depend depends directly and yet nowhere a storm struck nor did thunderbolts this shows how we have become complacent about felling of a tree friends those who are 
quite sensitive about trees will find it as a murder felling of a tree just purely for a greed amounts to murder for eco sensitive people even not a tint of memory could trace how the trees looked like because trees are not living in our memories we are obsessed with so many other objects that we tend to forget that we are also part of nature once it is it it goes out of your memory it's difficult to you see bring back the same memories again and so friends eco critics in a way try to de romanticize the romantic poetry also eco critics would question even wordsworth that yes you are writing wonderful poetry about nature you are expressing your emotions you are depicting idyllic beauty of pastoral ambiance true and we are thankful for that but do also give reference to the impact of industrial revolution on these natural things or not an eco critic will try to look at even wordsworth's poem from that point of view so even not a tint of memory could trace how the tree looked like tree funny it sounds you see funny it sounds you concentrate on this first line funny it sounds and then again the poet laughs in the last lines but there is a gap between these two funny it sounds and i cannot even believe it today that this table chairs writing table stand bookshelf all these things were indeed an olden tree once upon a time once upon a time you see as if he is telling an epic story of a tree tree itself is an epic because it takes long time to mature under its shelter so many as i said organisms live and to make our short stories beautiful stories of narratives we break those epics so once upon a time where indeed a once an old olden tree once upon a time today it's incredible it is unbelievable and perhaps i would laugh today i would feel like laughing in fact sometimes after returning home exhausted you see when poet comes back home after being exhausted he returns home it is like homecoming it is like coming back under the greenwood tree if you remember shakespeare and he enjoys this moment of respite the stillness under the tree after returning home exhausted having had a full meal while reading the latest issue of jan kalyan jan kalyan if you translate it it is welfare of the people a gift that comes from a well wisher in fact sometimes if one fantasizes and then then now in this times of uh, restive moments the poet imagines that if the tree had not been cut what would have been the picture of the tree today or in fact what i have destroyed from the arm of the chair on which the poet is sitting lying near this door blossoms a violet colored flower you see the color image you must be learning in your stylistics how the poet is using the colors the names of the magazines and how he manages the rhythm between the one and the other stanzas so that you know the the appeal to preserve the tree in our mind we goes on we go on ruminating and it ultimately at the end of the poem the poet has been able to leave a significant message for all of us from the arm of the chair lying near this door blossoms a violet colored flower flower you can imagine the softness of a flower and the color the natural violet color but now the tree has become a dead wood it has become hardened like our senses for the trees so the contrast between the softness of the flower 
and the hardness of the chair you can imagine why the poet is offering this contrast that they're not the sour tasting sweet fruit now this is this appeals to our sense of taste sour tasting sweet fruit from the drawer of the table covered with the papers now you see the papers are also made up of wood pulp the more papers we use the more we distract the forests with the papers full of oration notes lecture notes so to give a lecture it is a paradox of the situation that we have to use papers we might give lecture on preservation of trees but for that we contribute in cutting trees but how we can minimize this can we minimize this with the help of digital technology or not that i would want to know from dr dilip barar also at the end of this uh, presentation that a red bird again use of the beautiful imagery red bird suddenly takes a flight from the shelf now this bird's nest has been destroyed but poet fantasizes a red bird suddenly takes a flight from the shelf where the flies the files of janakalyan and akhandanan you look at the name of uh, the another magazine akhand anand eternal joy how can we establish the possibilities of eternal joy for the future generations how can we establish janakalyan welfare of the people who are living now these are the issues that if you are interested you can explore and they are stacked you see a bird is a live entity it just flies in one of the stories of drubad also on which i have worked there is a reference to a bird and a forest and and a, a forest guard he says there when you see a bird flying in the sky it is a rare bird Uh, I, I forget the lines, exact lines. But a case like that, I Dudrej. Ha, the the name of the word is Dudrej. Dudrej ke uj naam se. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting. I mean, jo to Allah ne kudrat thay jaaye. What a beautiful sight it is. Now you see that sign, that kind of you see kinetic energy that this living organism has is very important. But we are deadening such life. vibrant colors as well as kinesis and we turn them into dead wolves and that is for our use the question is whether we can minimize our consumerism the question is whether we can you see lessen our needs this is what we have to think after after uh, after we read this poem that the intoxicating fragrance you know you see again he appeals to the sense of you know smell intoxicating fragrance of a spring already this in silent spring we refer to there is a possibility that that, that the spring will be silent if we don't care of it if we don't take care of it now it is one of the poets also says that calendar ma apne joye tar khabar pade ke vasant aavi ane gai we live in this kind of uh, you see uh, uh, matrixes the intoxicating fragrance of a spring arriving unannounced unannounced without announcing it comes because we don't know when it will come and it comes out of a natural process oozes into the drawer where the daily wares are kept folded you see all this refers to our needs and how we and for that to satiate our needs how we deal with nature and then again one laughs a little again the poet laughs and then again one laughs a little and feels amused and remembers you see now he laughs with some seriousness because till we reach this part of the poem we have already realized 
our role in conservation of nature, our role in reforestation, our role in plantation of the trees in our campuses, near our houses. So now the, there, is, there is a realization what our forefathers have done, or rather what colonizers have done with our own land. Now let us think about our lands with the political tools that we have. What is happening around us? What is happening to the forests? What is happening to the tribal people that live around us? These are the questions that such kinds of poems leave to us. And then again, one laughs a little. Now there is, you see, repentance that we have disturbed enough. Now let's go back. Let's try to minimize our detrimental impact on nature. You see, Ramayana also starts with a sense of repentance. When Valmiki sees two birds dying before his eyes, he, 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 feels, he, he feels that he himself is, has been shot inside. And as an expiation, literary expiation, he starts writing the poetry. Poignant lines just come out of his mouth. This is a story, of course. But the story, every story has its significance. And then again, one laughs a little and feels amused. Now he feels amused. You see, when the situation is out of your control, you can do nothing but laugh. But then again, you have to start improving the situation so that others, the future generations would not laugh at you. And remember that the olden ochre brown tree already so rasped and tiptoed so many years from now. So friends, how did you like this poem? Uh, what is your response to this poem? Uh, Dr. Dilip Bharat, uh, is it okay if I stop here with your permission? Yes, good one. Yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, it will be interesting if some students are asking some questions or uh, any kinds of uh, uh, interaction that uh, they would like to have here. So we, uh, we, uh, we request students to either you can put uh, the question in the comment also or you can come live. You can come live and you can ask some question or you can give your inputs also your inputs or that also before giving your final feedback or what of things before that if any other uh, form of interaction that you would like to do so you all are invited for that yes uh, i yes, can sir. see your comment yes Hello? Nidhi, please yes uh, Nidhi, please. Sir, i'm audible oh sorry Tamsa. Yes, yes you are audible yes okay uh sir i have one question uh uh, if you are writing on any topic or a particular research paper on this uh, to uh, topic of e uh, criticism, eco-criticism and all, uh, sometimes we can see that uh, some uh, some kind of myths uh, are played a very vital role. And we also can mention in our papers and uh, also the concept uh, conceptual reading are also required. So we had uh, that kind of a social uh, narration like uh, any calamities or any catastrophic moment have happened in a... Uh, in our life through nature or in nature uh, the social narrations are, are like that it is a kind of punishment of god that we uh, done something wrong with the nature and it is a uh, return punishment of god so uh, what are the conceptual reading uh, of uh, such kinds of uh, myths and how can we see these kinds of myths in the perspective of uh, eco criticism sir please sir. Uh, 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 Tamsa, you must have read uh this uh, lines uh, alone alone all, all alone on a wide wide sea you see coleridge's lines uh, if you look at uh, the, the the picture that uh, coleridge creates before us uh, uh, there was uh, uh, albatross uh, is following the boat and for no reasons he has been shot he has been killed by one of the sailors and as a result an apocalyptic uh, storm strikes on their boat and one by one, they, they, they drop dead. And at last, the protagonist remains to go on repenting and sharing his tale to others. So this kind of, you see, it was a, 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 it has a mythical dimension to it. 
and then you can relate it to either to our myths or myths western myths or in whatever way you can juxtapose these things uh, so uh, tamsa uh, am i clear uh, yes sir of course uh, and sir one more that uh, this particular topic has a multi dimensional perspective or uh, on a socially or reviews uh, and also with the scientific uh, perspective also so this perspective is more uh, connected with it so how we can elaborate more in uh, yes. in a, uh, with literature scientific and other all tamsa that depends upon your orientation your inclination for example if you are a feminist dr barad had sent uh, one very beautiful image uh, two days back uh, because you people are working very hard on your uh, digital platform and i uh, noted that only two boys uh, names were mentioned all the others are girls so uh you see the feminist force cannot be overlooked by anyone in fact so if you are interested in looking at uh, nature from feminist perspective you will find a plethora of material on uh, uh, internet platforms on academia.education on various other uh, uh, websites and uh, dr dilip barad has been sharing all this website with me also so uh, Uh, and you can also look at uh, the same problem from socio economic viewpoint from the viewpoint of racial marginalization from the viewpoint of dalit questions in india uh, from uh, questions of children from from the uh, you see there are various ways in which in which you can also look at how uh, digitalization impact nature how the uh, psychological process of watching video games can also impact nature you see all this you can connect uh, unfortunately i would not be able to uh, talk about the various trends of uh, ecocrism uh, right now because as dr barad has said i have i have just uh, submitted my thesis so after the examiner says okay i would be able to speak on this right uh, but i i hope uh, i have uh, i have given you an answer Yes, sir. Thank you for giving me the various aspects so I can work on it. Thank you, sir. Next, anybody would like to question, sir, or give anything? Ah, uh, yes, yes Nidhi. I would like. Yes, Kavisha. Properly. Yes, yes, Kavisha. Yeah, Kavisha. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for explaining the poem so beautifully. Like we had uh, uh, referred to stylistics, but not in this kind of eco-critical sense. So it was a very beautiful uh, explanation by you, and we would like to further uh, practice this kind of uh, reading stylistics in this manner. Yes. Um, I had one uh, question regarding this, uh, yeah. sir. As the post-colonial theory has uh, its foundation. Uh, in the exploitation of certain uh, uh, land or uh, uh, certain continents, uh, and uh, this foundation has been constructed in terms of uh, superiority and inferiority uh, 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 idea. Uh, and so, how can we bring together this post-colonial idea and eco-criticism as a whole discourse? And uh, very uh, yes, yes. Uh, sir, my Sorry. question is here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, eco criticism as a whole discourse and the whole critical thought, uh, 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 by taking into consideration these aspects of race, uh, that is what I found most uh, uh, hard. That uh, how can we connect race with this uh, idea? Very, very pertinent question, Kavisha. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, we were uh, going through a kavita, and this is a question from Kavisha. <laughs> uh kavisha actually it's a very pertinent question how can we uh, connect post colonial theories with eco criticism as you said <coughs> colonial mentality is first of all to create gaps between two kinds of uh, social sections for example westerners were superior uh, than the easterners and that's why easterners need some good treatment from the westerners and they need to be corrected and they are savage they are junglies and uh, their ways of thinking have to be corrected and for that they they will you see exploit us in the same way within our nations there are various other groups who are economically marginalized socially marginalized 
and the sense of superiority that has been ingrained into the minds of the people. And because of that, you become entitled to exploit the lesser uh, uh, social sections, lesser in terms of intellectuality, lesser in terms of economics, later in, in gender roles also a very uh, uh, significant uh, uh, role in this uh, eco criticism. That's why, because women are nowhere inferior to men, but men have created a discourse as to how women are inferior to men and therefore they become targets of exploitation and they justify their this uh, exploitation in this way so you can connect post colonial theories in this way to uh, eco critical reading of uh, any text that you come across according to your taste you can refer to some novels or uh, whatever forms you like right okay thank you thank you very much anybody would you like to question i sir or any kind of information All my friends, uh, please question Afrilia. Sir will give a very beautiful answer. So, have anyone question? Not any particular question, sir. Okay. Uh, but so, uh, uh, enjoyed our various poems, and thank you for this. Yeah, I I, I must thank. Uh, Professor Dilip Barad, as well as uh, Dr. Sitanshu Yeses Chandra. Yes. Now, we move forward our feedback session. And first, okay. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just before uh, the feedback is given. Yeah, okay. So I would like to share this couple of uh, photographs also here. So let me, let me share a screen. Uh, let me, uh, ha, yeah, uh, a kind yeah. of... Uh, Hi, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, excuse me, uh, only two slides I have yet to uh, display. Okay, so, yeah, please, please, yeah, uh, complete that. Allow, yes, yeah. If you allow. Yes, yeah. yeah. Very important slides. Yeah, okay. Uh, credits uh, must be given to the cover image, tree felling, uh, GIF, chip movement photograph, and the uh, picture last appeal, ah. and then uh, Jessica D. Konig's poem, Koshi Gimansu's report, Upadhyay Vinit. Mm -hmm. uh, report of tree felling and Sitansu Yeshe Sindra's Fari Pasu Brooks from Odysseus Nu Hallesu. Uh, I my acknowledgments are due to Professor Sitansu Yeshe Sindra and of course Professor Dilip Barad because you see on the other day I was talking to you that it's always uh, a mutually beneficially experience to have exchange with knowledge seekers. So uh, Professor Hitesh Ravaya also I must. He has uh, allowed me to uh, make this presentation uh, before the Vaiva Vausi and also for the same reasons Dr. Aditi Vaya and my daughter Dirga who has helped me prepare the entire uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so thank you very much. Dr. Dilip Bara, please continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there are, there are, there are very interesting references uh, that we can read uh, in terms of our contemporaneity uh, in this uh, aspect here. Uh, so let me just uh, uh, go to slide. Okay. Uh, so a couple of things I was putting in the chat also, like uh, 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 when we connect it with the contemporary times uh, and when we try to look at uh, this concerns uh, that uh, the, the poets do write uh, and how we connect with what is uh, happening in and around us. Uh, it, it's, it, these are not very easy choices, like it is uh, to, uh, to think in terms of uh, uh, this idea that, well, we all can be very conscious about uh, what we see as uh, uh, ecological concerns. But these choices are tough choices also. Very tough choices uh, are there. These are not that easy choices. And so uh, uh, this was uh, the photograph which was taken on this uh, Bhavnagar Somnath Highway. So like, see, on one side, we want good roads also. So we complain when we don't have good roads. 
and then when we see that well for the sake of good roads that we want we are these are very old trees they are very old trees being cut down so uh, you feel an anxiety when you see uh, such a huge trees being cut down on the entire road of more than 200 km 250 200 uh, almost 300 km road and this entire road was full of so many trees uh the road is uh, road is still under construction but uh, this this concern this choice how difficult the choice is um, that whether we want development ecology uh, and in this choice is uh, become so tough the other day in our class uh, this point of displacement in the context of displacement any zaidi is talking and uh, the, the reference was about even narmada dam also so Uh, how we require dam we want dam dam gives us uh, lots of facilities water in the the regions where there is scarcity of water it gives happiness to so many people but at the same time what kind of ecological damage eh, we we uh, we have to undergo and again a very difficult choice eh, that we and to look at uh, those things there and like many times like uh, 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 technology and ecology also is seen in a in a quite uh, binary way. Binary way. So there are a couple of references also given by uh, 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 Devang sir also that uh, uh, how do we see that if I send one letter or when I say I send an email, what kind of carbon footprint this? There's a letter, a print letter, because print letter also has its own carbon print. For example, if uh, if, if this was. Uh, this was uh, uh, the interaction which happened uh, at our department at our department this is a department building if had it been at our department uh, then uh, 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 devang sir might have traveled in his personal car or any of the vehicle we all might have traveled in our vehicles to reach at one place and what would be the carbon footprint of all those vehicles traveling and and then sitting in a room and 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 all those things so Uh, this also are very interesting calculations that people tend to make and try to see that how and what way uh, do we uh, work out on this when there are international gatherings for the environmental uh, at one place world leaders gather and they fly in in dozens of aeroplanes and they fly in dozens of aeroplane at one place and then they convene the meeting instead of that if they convene the meeting over digital platform sitting in their own offices whether it will reduce carbon footprint or not we need to think and we need to search if anybody has done any kinds of analysis for that also so this was this was the department when we we came here this was in 2008 2008 and this were the free first tree plantations done in 2008 12 years back 12 years back so what kind of of uh, work uh, like our students uh, in last 12 years have done uh, to see that uh, uh, if they are doing any damage by working on digital platforms uh, have they also done something to see that their carbon footprints are equated with other kinds of things have have they planted any trees or not so this uh, well it says like it was uh, uh, wonderful uh, this was 2016 yeah. <laughs> this was uh, you can you can compare uh, this was how the barren land it was and and in 2016 uh, it was uh, uh, like this and every year we have this concept of memory tree planters memory tree plant. how you balance how you balance with uh, this this world because uh, these choices are tough you can't only be ecologically uh, careful and you don't think of a development or progress in, in different ways also but what kind of balance and uh, this uh, we do will be required this kinds of technological tools also for ecology these tools if there are damagers they also help us they also help us in so that also is very interesting that the same earth movers we call this heavy heavy machines earth movers so how this earth movers also help us in in making our environment good also so see how these choices are sort of that whether i want to make a have a technology or not these are the products of technological uh, uh, revolution that we have these kinds of tools so very tough land eh? that the land here in bhavnagar where our university is situated is very hard rock you can see the rock there it is not possible to grow uh, uh, trees here eh? so you have to dig down you have to pour in land you have to work very hard this was last year eh? work which uh, 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 semester 3 students are doing there eh? uh, uh, for this sake uh, and then uh, 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 to plant and to take care eh? of those things eh? Uh, these are some of those memory uh, photographs of uh, the last year this year we are not able to do 
because of corona we don't have a, we didn't get a chance to uh, have a gathering huh? but this was the last year uh, 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 tree plantation work huh? which students were uh, uh, doing in and around uh, the department uh, there uh, so that was this memory tree plantation 21st september 2019 uh, the work done by the gardening committee and all the uh, members who, who worked hard uh, for this uh, uh, this were the trees, the new trees that uh, now they look very good even in one year because we had a very good rain uh, this year. So, and because we have gone deeper, we have gone deeper, we have put other, other, uh, this midi uh, uh, and lots of uh, uh, fertile land has been put into uh, this. Uh, then uh, we, we were able to get uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, this is also that symbolic image <laughs> that how, uh, how they, these are opposite things. Uh, these are uh, what we see is that one at the cost of other. But what we see is that what balance we can have with the machines and ecology also, the technology and ecology also. So how we try to look at those things that becomes very significant. So these are very recent photographs. Huh? These are very recent uh, photographs of uh, the trees, which has grown into a land where it is very difficult to grow uh, things. So you can just, uh, if you see this, you'll find that, well, the trees are still less, but you have to go back down to 2008. <laughs> And then you have to see this. So when you see this, then you realize what hard work has been done by students uh, to, to see that uh, this uh, uh, the, the trees uh, can 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 still make the environment quite green, uh, quite eco-friendly, and lots of uh, uh, birds keep on coming here uh, uh, in this uh, uh, area where this work is done. Uh, there. So that was also uh, something that becomes very significant uh, when we see that. The choices are tough. Huh? Choices are tough, and uh, and whether technology or industry, whether roads or dams or ecology, and and how uh, with these tough choices we we try to find a kind of a fine balance huh, in between huh? uh, also becomes very uh, interesting uh, there. Yes. Yeah, so now uh, I think uh, the students can carry on with their feedback and other things. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now I would like to request Kavisha. Alagya to give her feedback. Yes, thank you, Nidhi. Uh, thank you, Devang, sir, for this uh, very, very much insightful session of yours. Um, you had highlighted certain urgency for developing a, an ecological perspective uh, with reference to the ongoing crisis, pandemic crisis, as well as this uh, technological and digital crisis also. So uh, it would be very nice if, uh, if uh, you can uh, elaborate something more on uh, technology and ecology uh, as, a, as a, uh, the need of the day right now, because uh, this pandemic is going on and the, the technology is moving in a much more faster way. And uh, we are also, as Barrett sir also suggested, that we want both the kicks. We want this uh, uh, taking. We want to take care of ecology also, and at the same time, we want development also at the same rate. Yes. So, uh, uh, as uh, Professor Barrett has uh, rightly pointed out, that there is a need to uh, have balance. Uh, if you uh, read uh, Frankenstein by Shelley. Uh, there is a reference uh, to how we can uh, proceed further in our technological developments as well. Uh, uh, because our technology, we cannot do without technology, of course. But uh, what we have to see is that uh, how far uh, we have been able to translate the technological fruits into uh, ecological preservation. So as you said, it's good to be connected to digital platform and save our petrol at least we can do this we can save more trees around our campus and around our homes uh, when uh, professor barrett was displaying uh, uh, the uh, difference between uh, the uh, campus of 2008 and 2020 i just uh, uh, remembered uh, one similar slides uh, which were shown by dasmana who is an environmentalist and who has uh, you see, uh, made the entire Arvali area green, which is near Noida, Delhi. And they have worked for 10 years, entire population around them. And uh, uh, people participated uh, uh, enthusiastically into turning a, a totally infertile land mining site into a jungle. 
but now he was referring to in, in his lecture that government has decided to uh, put a road which will go across this forest and there are other ways through which these roads can be constructed there is no need to pass the road only through this side there are other alternatives as well so if uh, a political psyche could enhance their eco sensitivity uh, the balance which is of course a difficult it is like uh, uh, walking on a tight rope but somewhere we can put a check on our uh, the, the destruction that is being done on environment from our side how we can use technology in as effectively as we use it for ourselves that is the question that we must ask is it it yes yes definitely sir thank you and uh, today you mentioned some uh, some seminal works uh, regarding eco critical eco critical thinking and uh, uh, the conferences also so that will definitely going to help us uh, in our future endeavors thank you sir thank you very much thank you all for your yeah. Yes, and we also remember this uh, the same way. Like you gave the example of uh, this Noida, the uh, the RF forest case also. RF forest, yes. RF forest. Pune, yeah. Pune uh, airport uh, project. Airport, and this was metro project also. Mumbai metro metro project. And and and, there also. and, and government had uh, uh, you see uh, passed on decrees not to district certain areas, and uh, yet after some time. the uh, again uh, not only government but the judges have also passed on decrees not to disturb certain areas uh, looking at the enormity of uh, our impact on uh, environment and the land that we cohabit but uh, anyways as you said it is a tough choice and we have to go on making our ways uh, in a way as to how we can preserve something for the future generations Yes, because see, the, the, this is the Diwali time, and now people also are already like NGT, eh? National Green mm. Tribunal, has already said that people should not play firecrackers. Firecrackers. And we yes. already have those people who consider firecrackers is something that is connected with religion, and they say that our religion, and you say no when our religion comes, so we will play firecrackers even if you say no. So this this conflicts that one people connect this with yes. religion mm. also, and yeah, then. Yeah. they become adamant they become adamant that our religion is first for nature or for for fire crackers that choice becomes tough <laughs> and then uh, you see religion can uh, be used to protect environment uh, if you have seen in case of uh, black buck uh, killing case by salman yes yeah you see it is the religion that has uh, that has uh, you see raised so strong a voice against such a great such a big uh, big shot Yeah, big celebrity tribal people the tribal people tribal yeah people. bishnois yeah bishnois yeah bishnois it was it was uh, the message given by their uh, guru uh, mm. that uh, we, you must protect uh, trees uh, deer and uh, all the animals that uh, roam around like you yes. so uh, religion should be uh, used otherwise yes uh, sir i am audible I, yes <laughs> sir i know the question uh, question session is over but i still have one question um, after listening the kavishas and abarat sir's point uh, sir uh, we uh, we see that nowadays a uh, technology and nature are something kind uh, um, more cruciality and inter contrasting thing when we study the the uh, kind of uh, movie or a novel that frankenstein and uh, recently one more uh, the kong skull island is a very interesting movie where we can see that Uh, it is a kind of a zoo where uh, some uh, human or some scientists throw some nu nuclear bombs in the zoo, and and uh, suddenly the uh, animals uh, are uh, uh, being in a deformed way, and it creates a very uh, uh, massive uh, uh, deconstructions uh, in a, a human life. So uh, we can see that in a which way we can study the who is ultimately overpowering. It is a uh, technology or a human, and what is the ultimately ultimate role of human being as being a sensible uh, person? Yes, uh, that that, will, that humans will decide, because um, after all, uh, after all, you see, the same technology can be used to preserve tigers and lions. Uh, you can use the drones. You can use uh, various. Technological methods to 
uh, stop uh, illegal poaching into the forests to stop uh, smuggling of uh, wood so technology can be of a great great help for environmental preservation of course um, but it depends just... upon but but it depends upon how you use your technology so it is the mind that makes heaven of hell or hell of heaven um if i may add um, yeah. yeah please dirga yeah so good evening every uh, i mean good uh, good afternoon everyone so basically uh, as far as technology and uh, ecology are con is concerned uh, the swiss uh, government is developing a big data which can uh, track all these uh, uh, environmental uh, activities and send uh, uh, real time uh, uh, images from the satellite so uh, in india also uh, we are using this uh, nsat something uh, which tracks deforestation and uh, the fires which are which were recently caused in uttarakhand so technology uh, i mean we are using technology in order to um, uh, gather the data and uh, mm. i mean uh, use it uh, towards uh, conservation of yes a very good input dirga thank you there is uh, uh, recently there are, there are very interesting uh, things like these birds the, the birds travel a lot huh? several continents they travel and now we are able to see because we are able to tag them huh? we are able to tag with technology so their movements also now we are able to map huh? the the birds movement so uh, and and that's very surprising that the how the birds come to know huh? that after so many kilometers they are away for so many months that they can again come back to their homes so animal migration uh, tracking uh, that is the technology i have put a wikipedia link of that also so that technology is, is also very interestingly developing and helping us understanding understanding this uh, behavioral patterns of birds which can be used to help the birds uh, and in the survival of the birds that this all things are normally uh, used so uh, well, th th there are lots those, those radiations and other kinds of things sometimes our popular imagination uh, popular imagination thinks that all radiations are harmful to all the birds uh, and and sometimes our cinema also creates those images uh, and there, there are no uh, significant scientific data uh, regarding those things so that's why uh, uh, people are not concluding scientifically that uh, radiations are, are are damaging the the birds or not but right now they are uh, being very helpful uh, uh, in tracking the movements which can help us in 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 uh, in the survival uh, uh, aspects of uh, this uh, dying instinct uh, this uh, species which are uh, dying in that also we are using uh, yes yes uh, 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 professor bar your observation is quite uh, helpful to me also now i would like to invite hina malik to give his feed or feedback hina malik yes am i audible properly yes 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 properly thank you devang sir for spending time with us and i enjoy a lot this session this is very good informative uh, and i uh, you are giving so, so many examples uh, example related this session Uh, I glad to see here for giving deeply information uh, on uh, eco critical thinking wall lecture and yes you are uh, you also give some pointing line by William Harris and Robert Frost and another example uh, Amita Ghosh uh, this is very interesting topic about this uh, then uh, uh, you said that uh, one eco feminist uh, Vandana Shiva this is very a good example uh, then uh, you are uh, give uh, two poem uh, gunjan uh, gandhi and uh, Je jessica d comen after baby this is very good example in this uh, time environmental is problematic and uh, global uh, dimension and uh, local uh, wisdom and you are say to in uh, def uh, deforestation data it is uh, I, it is a very good information uh, and uh, one very good poem for the patch of brooks this is i like it uh, it is a black humor you said that uh, at the last you gave one poem very good poem this is uh, and also thank you so much sir thank you hina looking this wall it is a 
I can say that it is the time to wake up. Be aware with the environment. Yeah. We only not human being in the earth who is lives beside all these insect, these uh, animals are also living person. So we human being forget that uh, that we are only living person. Now it is time to be aware that uh, we are not only living, but beside us there is uh, so many living creatures, animals on earth. Yes. So then next, I would like to invite a Mehal Pandya to give her feedback. Mehal Pandya, over to you, please Mehal. Am I audible? Yes, yes, we all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nidhi. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Devang sir, for this insightful uh, session. And uh, there is a one poem, and uh, I like that uh, one line. It is uh, has been used to make the furniture for home. So I I like it, and I try to make a one or two lines for related these lines that a panane lage chhe, khuchu hashe to kai kshul. A panane lage chhe khush. खुचू हसे तो कई शूर बाकी आम आवीना खरे जा होए एनुज मोर लेके जा रहे क्या रे क्या वो बंदू हुए जा क्या फर्नीचर बनी क्या पची जा रहे त्याग कोई पान जो होए ने आवीना खरे लेके आज ये सिचुएशन से आज है ने अने रिलेटेड आई वो ट्राई टू मेक टू लाइंस एंड यस आर दिस योर लाइंस यस आर दिस � then, uh, then Dilip sir, uh, really uh, his efforts of uh, creating uh, green awareness around uh, the department has uh, brought out its results. It has come into its flying colors. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, just I try to make a uh, try to make it this related to this line from you your poem which you make understand uh, understandable for us. So yes, we should develop the sense of uh, ecological sense. So we can uh, uh, first we should uh, stop to destroy it, then try to uh, you know save it. So we we'll, uh, treat like uh, and behave like uh, unmature because uh, like uh, Duryodhan, he said that I know everything, but I cannot do uh, dharma dharma like. So apne khabar to chhe ki apne show karwan ho chhe show nahi, but chhata apne kari shakta na thi. But uh, for, uh, for, uh, from this session, uh, it was very interesting, insightful, and informative. Thank you so much, sir, for this session. Thank, Thank you, you Thanks for your lines. Thank Thank you, Mehal. Sir, mention that more parts, sir. And yes, I want to like, uh, I, okay, sorry. Sorry, Niti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mehal, you can continue, please. Sorry for interpretation, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you said that uh, we are only, uh, we are not only being on this earth, but uh, uh, many are others. And there is a one like Uma Shankar Joshi that yes. uh, Vishal yes. Chagvista Renati Ek Jumanavi Pashu Chai Panki Chai Vanoni Chai Vanaspati. Mehal, by so, the way, yes, uh, uh, no. uh, Mehal, just for your knowledge, I have translated this yes, poem sir. and yeah. I have used it in my thesis. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes. Devang sir, thank you for giving us a beautiful and immense knowledge about this eco-critical problems and all. Um, I, during this session now, I go to the past and remember my first class. Uh, Gandhi Bapu no part how to omne. Okay, Gandhi Bapu sabar mati nadi mati pani lava jai to ekad lot of pani liye brush karva matya. So Mahadeo bhai desha ye puchhu ke Bapu abri nadi chha to mekya mekaj lot oliyo chha. So Bapu ya saras jawa bhaiyo ke mu eklot nathi ya nadi mati pani lava matya. A nadi mati bhaja praniyo pakshiyo manso bhaja ch pani wa apre chha to apna koi hak nathi tha to. के एक कच्च वस्तु पर आप लोग आधी पत्तियों चमाऊँ हैं ना अत्यारे ह्यूमन बीइंग एज करें सर नेचर वी आर थिंकिंग जस्ट अबाउट आवर सेल्फ वी आर नॉट थिंकिंग अबाउट द नेचर एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी वी फेस द सो मेनी नेचुरल क्राइसिस नाउ इट्स अ टाइम टू बी अवेयर यस यस एंड अपने सर शुरुआत कर भी पड़ से English department has already started. Yes, sir. We 
we have started because of sir all thanks for dilip sir sir it can be seen it can be observed it can be felt now i would Haan, like sir, to... one more thing uh, need yes, need i have yes. one more yes. poem uh, from the narration of nature that uh, i i forget the author but i have, uh, remember the lines that vanaro vadalo kahe vanarayu sargi sargi re jhalari this is very interesting poem the moon uh, the one most uh, uh, thing is that it is a na uh, narration from the nature side not for human side it is a vision of nature by the author i don't know the name of author but it is a very interesting poem to read yes with the perspective right. of it thanks for your uh, thanks for your reference hello, hello ah, nidhi i want to yes i want to share something about Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, respected uh, Devan Sanat Kumar Nanavati and also Dilip sir and uh, also my senior and uh, junior students. I have written uh, some little bit thoughts about uh, uh, our life. Uh, what kind of activity is doing by doing by people? And uh, <laughs> I am not a poet, but uh, I always. try to become a, as a poet so uh, my title is just one second uh, as a criticize to human life for a trees so uh, my poem is in gujarati so i want to be, go with gujarati language so now i have written so uh, i want to share with you just one second aa vruksh ne thayu aa vruksh ne thayu आ मानवी ने थोड़ू आप आ मानवी ने थोड़ू आप मानवी ने थे आ सारो लाभ आप मानवी ने थे आ सारो लाभ सस्तो आ लाभ लई लीधो लाभ आ लाभ मना रंग बेरंगी झूपड़ू पूपड़ू पे झूपड़ा में न थी एन शांति एम एने कर मकान मकान में न मी ए शांति त्या तो एने बना बिल्डिंग जीवन आ तो थी मोटी आफत आफत ने दूर करने वावी आए पोते वृक्षों त्या तो समय गयो ए जीवन नो त्या तो आ गई ए जीवन की छेली घड़ी पे थोड़ू समझाय समझा समझा थी गई हम रात पे समझाय समय तो गयो पे समझा के जंगल आ कूदरत ए तो जन्नत थी थी गई हम थोड़ी बात थैंक यू सो मच टू एवरी वन लिशन फाइंड वर्ड you will find words because you have started loving this piece of uh, writing that's why you will find words and all his other books uh, this uh, mm, night uh, this uh, pilgrims of the night it is written on adoria vas and uh, the plights of uh, the poor people dhruva has uh, written extensively on this and uh, his latest one is na iti it is on technology and ecology it is on technology and ecology what bharat sir is referring to is a big question and dhruva has dealt very efficaciously with this problem in na iti that is his latest novel now anybody would like to any feedback give any feedback any question from semester 3 or semester 1 all are free to ask or tell anything please my friends
anybody would uh, like to ask or uh, give her or his feedback okay now we move to our our thanksgiving speech and i would like to invite a uh, tamsha pandya to give her thanksgiving speech tamsha pandya over to you ah uh, yes thank you nidhi and once again thank you uh, sir for uh, your uh, for the very informative insightful uh, session with us and also with the with very healthy discussion uh, uh, so as for we are the future generation who can highlight such issues because we have a strength to function our strength in a very uh, innovative forms we have this technology we have this digital platforms to uh, function this kinds of writing and we can write a more and more about such things and we can show and it denote that uh, actual problem with uh, with through our literature through our keyboard through our pen and our paper so uh, because uh, we can uh, just we can write more and we can uh, show the society that we are doing with uh, with each and every form because every life matters because every life matters thank you thank you very much sir for your healthy discussion and very informative session sir. thank you thank you all thank you namsha thank you now i would like to invite uh, dilip sir to conclude this session over to dilip sir yeah okay thanks thanks a lot nidhi for uh, anchoring the entire event also this was the first time that semester 1 students are now also learning to anchor uh, the, the events uh, semester 1 students we are not able to meet them personally because they are just learning online because we never got a chance to uh, they might not have seen the department also many of might not have come to the department also but good uh, nidhi uh, and many other also uh, jignesh also uh, uh, presented a very good poem uh, there uh, and uh, we are very thankful to you uh, devang i would like to call you devang uh, you must you, also, uh, you, <laughs> you, should have, you should have started yeah. calling me devan from the beginning yeah. so that uh, so that uh, these would know uh, how uh, interrelated we are yes yeah uh, like the trees yeah, like the trees yeah <laughs> Okay, so th thank you. Thanks a lot. It was very interesting. Uh, very, very interesting works uh, uh, we are exposed to. A uh, good poem. Your translation also was very interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, basic ideas. Uh, seminal works also you mentioned. So the students, many of them are writing some research articles or preparing their uh, uh, material for their studies. Uh, they all should refer those seminal works, uh, which are also discussed from Rachel's uh, work, The Silent Spring. From there to 2020 publications are also very uh, very well uh, uh, presented in the slides uh, there so thanks a lot it was a very very useful uh, academically also and in other way also it was very interesting uh, uh, talk on the ecological uh, concerns and environmental studies uh, there so i hope many of you will get good ideas to write about your blog or somewhere in in uh, presentations also you can uh, uh, make use of uh, the content which is shared by uh, devang uh, in this discussion so on behalf of department and all of our students, we are very thankful to you for sparing your time there. Uh, we also want to promise that after your viva is over, we want another talk on uh, Dhruv Bhatt's uh, work. And, and uh, who is the Odia writer? I'm forgetting the name. Mohanti? It's Gopinath Mohanti. Gopinath Mohanti, yeah. So that also will be good. So after the vivas are over, we are again booking you uh, for one more session on this with the reference to those talks. Pleasure uh, and pride. Yeah, and if the vivas will be online, we will ask everybody to attend your viva also. Last oh, time sure. the viva were on uh, were online, so now nowadays vivas are online. So if that will happen, then it will be good <laughs> for everybody good. to participate. Yeah, uh, and it will be good because uh, they will be able to uh, raise more questions. More questions, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, uh, thanks, like thanks. Nidhi, like hmm. Nidhi, uh, uh, let me say that uh, this was my first presentation online. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, on Google Meet, I have never uh, presented anything. And uh, so uh, thanks to you, Professor Barad, for yeah. providing me with this opportunity yes. and uh, getting me familiar with uh, switches of my laptop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and also thanks to Dirga, your daughter, who has done the backstage work. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. 
yeah okay thank you, very much. Thank, 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 you, you all. thank you thank you, you everybody much, yeah thanks thanks a lot yeah great uh, sir uh, may i announce something uh, yes yeah okay uh, very good afternoon everybody uh, so uh, as the permission uh, with sir uh, and uh, uh, as per our tradition of a department every year uh, we are semester 3 students celebrating uh, celebrating birthdays of our friends